Hey folks, I'm HP, it's Dr. Pink, and today's topic is basic songwriting. And we are going to talk about the 145 or the L form or the classical cadence. It's all the same, and it's the center of all music. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button because more stuff will come. And we're also going to develop our songwriting abilities more. But if you don't understand the classical cadence, that's the really start of it, you don't get anywhere in songwriting or understanding music. So let's start with the classical cadence, yeah, or the one, four, five form or, or tonica, subdominant, dominant, or the L form. It's really easy to understand. So let's get started. Okay, folks. Um, before we start, we have to uh, make the difference between major and minor song, songs in major or songs in minor. The classical cadence is the same in both uh, versions. And uh, if you're not into theory, it's pretty easy to understand with the L form. As an example, we're doing it in G. Here's the G. Then the, this will be the tonica. This will be the subdominant C. This will be the dominant. Tonica, subdominant, dominant. And this creates an L. Also, if we want to do it in another position here, we have here the G, tonica, C, subdominant, D, dominant. That's the center of it. G, C, D, and you can just change keys but just by moving this form. Now, if you are doing this in major, it's pretty simple. First chord is a major, G major. Second chord is a major chord as well, C major. Third chord is a major again. And back. And the sense of the classical cadence, it creates a, r a resting point, builds up tension, and on the dominant is maximum tension. Then we go back to resolution. Peace point, build up tension, maximum tension, back to resting point. That's the whole thing of a classical cadence. And this form appears in all music, either in rock, there you have your power chords, or even in blues, or classical. Stuff like that. It's really very simple. And that's the whole thing of the classical good answer. Resting point, build up tension, maximum tension, resolve it back. And it's in major, so G major, C major, D major. We take the example up in G major here. G major, oops, C major, and D major. And the way you, you can uh, play around with the classical dance, you make uh, parts longer, shorter, as you like, but it's always about resting point, build up tension, maximum tension, resolve it. You can also make one, and uh, why is it called one, four, five? Because this is the scale. G major, so one, two, three, four, five. If you count the notes in the scale, this is the one, two, three, this is the four, the five. When we get deeper into songwriting and chord progression, you will understand these uh, Roman numbers here better, but uh, that's why I didn't really mention it so much. But it's uh, the pros talk about one, four, five. Yeah, good. In may minor, it's <coughs> pretty much the same. Did we just instead of a G mi major, we have a G minor, a C minor, as a four, but now comes a tricky thing. On the five, we have either a minor <coughs> or a major. Why is that so? 
if you take the scale G minor and make <coughs> you uh, and they create chords in the scale I gonna uh, don't go too deep into this now it's just to explain Th then it's possible that on the fifth of five you have either minor but since we want to have resting point build up tension maximum tension the minor uh, doesn't have such a strong effect as a major so listen yourself mm. resting point build up tension more tension rest now with the major resting point build up tension maximum tension and so that means you can on the five you can e have either a minor or a major same up here g minor c minor d major or minor yeah so that's the classical cadence if you don't understand the classical cadence you don't understand music I'm sorry to say that my teacher said that to me and I thought he's, much, uh, he's just a blockhead but at the end he was totally right if you don't understand classical cadence you will never understand music in depth I mean you can make it intuitively and this will somehow lead to the same results if, if you know the theory so really spend some time on the classical cadence also different ways of playing that let's say G major C to D yeah it's really a very important lesson to learn and um, or also if you make chords up here that would be a G to C to D to G See, it's the same thing, just all the chords. You can look in your chord book, different variations of major uh, or minor chords and try to let them fit inside. We also gonna uh, talk about inversions here. What are inversions? Because this spices up the classical cadence because um, sounds a little bit, let's say old fashioned. But if you would do something like this, what was that now? This was again the classical cadence, but I've used inversions. What are inversions? Inversions are chords which don't have the root note as the lowest note. So in the case of G, you can have a G, then G with a B in the bass. You see that with G with slash B. And this is one example of many. A bit hard to grab. I prefer this one here. Well, let's take this. We yeah, can take both. This one is tricky to grab. Here. And to C. Why we use an inversion? Because it leads more to the next chord. See? Oops. To C. Here again we make an inversion. C with the E in the bass. Well, I take this one. Same chord again, but up here. And to D. And D with F sharp in the bass. We can take the same here again. And this leads to G or, or to this G. So we have inversions here. Inversions make a more subtle picture of the classical cadence, but we still st just play one, four, five. In minor, this will be G minor, two. Uh, this be G minor, um, G minor with the B flat in the bass. Sounds a bit a little bit funny, but that's how it is. To C minor. But uh, honestly in minor you don't really work so much with the inversion because the effect is not so nice. To G and with G and the uh, F sharp in the bass. 
back to G minor. Yeah. Inversions work mostly with major chords, and especially on the triad. You also can make. Uh, now let's skip that for now. That's all. So we have the classical cadence in major and minor, and also inversions, especially on major chords, and to spice up your classical cadence, a one, four, five progression, or tonica subdominant dominant thing. Yeah, folks, that was a little bit of theory. I know most of you don't like theory, but it's it's like driving a car. If you don't know how to shift gears, probably you'll somehow make it to drive, <laughs> but you're more likely to hit the wall than uh, if you really know how to drive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it really makes sense. I mean, I don't really torture my students so much with uh, theory, but this stuff is really important. If you want to understand what you're playing, if you don't, if you for you it's no problem, you just copy the chords and you have no clue what you're doing. That's also cool. But if you want to understand and become self-creative, then you need to understand what's going on. And that's, and as I said, classical cadence is the main thing in music. Everything comes back to classical cadence, if you like it or not. It's just the exp expression. It doesn't have to do anything with classical music. It just started there and they'll develop more. Yeah. One more to say, if you want to download the, the, the tabs of for this to understand it better, it's available at HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Spotify, follow me on Facebook, follow me everywhere. And Mieng Dr. Ping are now signing off because we have been in hospital. Uh, we're still not so well and we keep it short, but this was the perfect lesson now to make a short lesson because it's not more to say. You just need to check it out, understand, and that's it. Yo, bye. <laughs>